Welcome back to uh, part two. We will be a bit more specific about the concept. So um, we will proceed with this thing here we call a blocking queue. Whenever these threads, uh, our producers and the consumers, they want to collaborate, they need some kind of shared resource to, to share these tasks. Right? So what we have here is the task queue. I have producer threads. Each of these are a separate thread. They can each produce tasks and put them into the queue. And I have uh, consumer threads. And each of these will then uh, take tasks from the queue and do the calculation or whatever is needed. Um, so in my case, we have simplified the protein folding computation example a little bit. The producers will just generate two random numbers, put that in a task into the queue. The consumers will take that task out and add the two numbers together and then um, uh, print out the result. That's the idea. Uh, so I still have a bunch of threads producing tasks. I have a bunch of threads consuming and calculating the tasks. And I have this queue here um, to uh, as a shared resource to, to, to you know communicate between the two. Right. Um, so, for example, my first thread here, it might produce a task. It generates the numbers 3 and 7, so it puts the task into the task queue. The other producers here are also simultaneously producing tasks. So we produce some more tasks. My consumers here are also, whenever they are ready to uh, calculate a new task, they will attempt to take one out of the queue. So a task is removed. We calculate the result, 3 plus 7 is 10, we print it out, All right? and another task is removed, and a task is generated over here, and that is put into the queue, and the result over here was calculated to be 3, printed out, and so on. So these will, in parallel, continuously produce tasks, and the consumers over here will, in parallel, also continuously consume the tasks. And the idea is that in my case here, I have five cells. I can have five tasks in the queue. So if a, if a producer cannot add another task to the queue because it is full, then it has to wait until a task is removed. And over here, if there are no tasks in the queue, then the consumers will have to wait until a task is added and then they can continue working. Um, so this is the example that we're going to implement in, in the next part. So. Again, I have my producers, they produce the tasks, I have my consumers, they retrieve and perform the tasks, and we have this uh, shared resource here, a blocking queue, we call it, uh, to help with communication between the two types. All right, so that was the end of part two. In the third part, we're going to look at how to implement this example.